You are listening to Hillary Topper On Air, the small business podcast to help you grow both personally and professionally. And now, here's your host, Hillary Topper. COVID has changed everything. So how can parents and high school students reimagine the college admissions process during COVID-19? Should high school students take time off before going on to the next step? And let's be honest here. Should people even consider college a necessity during these times? I'm Hillary Topper and you are listening to Hillary Topper on air. David Marcus is my next guest on the show today. He is an education coach and admissions expert who helps students and parents through the application process through his company called MarcusCoach.com. Welcome, David, to the show. So, David, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and what inspired you to start MarcusCoach.com. Sure. And Hillary, thank you so much for having me. My background sounds a little convoluted and unusual, but it actually plays into what I do now in terms of coaching students. So I started years ago as an education journalist in Miami. And then I ended up being a foreign correspondent in Latin America. I lived in Mexico and then Bogota, wow. Colombia, and then Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for 10 years. But I actually missed education a lot. And I ended up coming back to cover education at US News and World Report, which is somewhat controversial because they rank colleges and not everybody likes that, especially the colleges that don't do well in the rankings. Parents find it reassuring or they find it frustrating. And then I went to Newsday, the newspaper on Long Island, and I ended up covering higher education as well as writing a series about students across the suburbs of New York, Long Island, applying for college. That led me to write a book called Acceptance. And the, the book is was really a joy. It looked at an amazing counselor at a high school, a public high school, as he worked with students for a year. And I focused on several of the students, ranging from the valedictorian to a student who, frankly, people thought was kind of a goof off and kind of not serious. They didn't really know his whole story. And that gets me to my point. My point is to find out the story of the students, the story of the colleges, the story of the admissions people, the story of the counselors at, at schools who, who work with students and really delve in and, and find out, as, as the subject of my book says, it's not about the brand, it's about the fit. What is the best college, not for me, not for my brother, not for my sister, but for this particular kid? And that's what I'm interested in as a coach. And you mentioned marcuscoach.com. That's where I, I have my information. And I'm also a writer who writes about the subject. I'm, I'm just fascinated by, by the whole question of admissions, but also the larger questions we can talk about. What is college for? Is college the right thing? You mentioned COVID. Is, it, is college really right for a lot of students right now? It's so true. And, you know, it's just been a crazy year this year. Um, so how do we prepare our children to thrive in this new normal? Okay, you and I are talking at a time when there's phase three in some places, phase four, and the COVID virus is still sweeping the country. And I'm hoping somebody will listen to this and say, COVID, well, that was, you know, we have a vaccine. That was a thing of the past. But unfortunately, that's not going to be for a while, I have a feeling. And so I think that college admissions, like the travel industry, like all sorts of stuff, restaurants has been upended, upended for, for the near future and maybe forever by this pandemic. That's mostly bad news just because I know so many students who want to go they're in 10th or 11th or 12th and they want to go to college and, and follow the plan. But I'm, look, I'm trying to look at the silver lining of it. 
college admissions is going to be much more flexible, much more open in the next couple of years than it has been for years. And it's going to challenge students and, and parents to think about what's important, which is not a particular score on a particular test. It's not about making sure that you get a 4.333 as people do in the, the, the suburbs of Long Island. But it's about being curious about learning, about taking advantage of, of, of a situation, about making the best of things, about, about doing for your community, about being involved. And that's a really important message, even in these tragic, tragic times. So the economy is struggling right now. It's very uncertain, especially when it comes to job opportunities. I mean, these kids, they, they really have to, you know, keep looking and the competition is so fierce and there's so few jobs. So in your expertise, what careers do you think are viable as the economy struggles to recover? Well, that's a good question. And that's going to lead me to ask if college is actually necessary for everybody or for the majority of students. And the answer is, is, is might surprise some people, but let's step back for a second. I've been crisscrossing the country since my acceptance book came out. I've spoken to hundreds, thousands of people, parents and students, counselors, conventions, uh, conferences. And I used to use the statistics that, that buzz around, which is if you complete a bachelor's degree, if you complete it, your lifetime earnings are about 700,000 or so dollars more than someone who did not complete a bachelor's degree. And in fact, if you have a, an advanced degree, then you're talking about a million dollars more in earnings. Now, I'm not all about money. I happen to live in the suburbs where money is the dominant thing, but that's a, that's a gauge, that's a reassuring thing for parents whose kids are going to college. But I would argue now, having been around the country and having talked to people I met um, who are now stuck with COVID, there are many, many people who have bachelor's degrees who work so hard for them. And they just got laid off as managers at a company. They just got laid off um, even in the healthcare field. So to answer your question, this is really evolving and we could do a separate show on this, but it's really a good idea to read and to look at healthcare is evolving too, it's changing but there will be many jobs in healthcare going forward. There will be many jobs in coding and things that can be done by distance. There will be wonderful jobs in certain areas, biotech, for example, researching anybody who happens to be out there who's 16 and 17 is interested in finding vaccine and finding out about that. Good career choice. STEM careers are very important. And I say this as somebody who did not major in STEM, unfortunately, who majored in humanities, but I majored in, I, I was able to find a, a school, a college that made me really emphasize critical thinking and, and asking the right questions. And I think that's invaluable for anybody. And, and Hillary, I'll, I'll just add to this because you, it, it, it's germane to what you said. I went to Brown University, it's in the Ivy League, fine school, wonderful place. I went to Harvard University for a fellowship, great place. Love them both, loyal to them both. I'll give, I'll, someday I hope a, a gym will be named after me or at least a hand, a hand sanitizer station. But the college that changed my life, the college that changed my life completely is a place that you and your listeners never heard of. It's a community college in West Palm Beach, Florida. And that's where I went at night when I was in my 20s to learn Spanish to learn Spanish so that I could be, I could leave becoming a regular reporter covering education and become a foreign correspondent. And I took classes at night with cops, with firefighters, with electricians who needed or wanted to learn Spanish. They were driven. They weren't there to goof around. They weren't there to go to climbing walls. They weren't there because there was a great uh, pub because there was no pub. And that was an amazing, remarkable experience for me. And then I also went to school in a college in Bogota, Colombia for summer, lived with a family at the University of the Andes, Universidad de los Andes, and worked on my Spanish, learned about Spanish literature, Latin American mm -hmm. literature. That was phenomenal. So I, I think we're talking right now in a, in a very high pressure place, but 
education doesn't stop at 21. It doesn't stop at 22. It's a continuum. And so this is actually a time to rethink what is education. Maybe a community college degree is a great thing, even for, for a student who's an A student. Absolutely. That's a great point. Um, before we move on, I just have to shout out to my sponsors. I thank them so much for their support. I have to thank the Russo Law Group, the Profit Express with Tim Healy, Pop International Galleries, the Donna Drick Show, and Fortune Off Fine Jewelry. Uh, and by the way, both Fortune Off Fine Jewelry and Pop International Galleries are now open, so please go and frequent them. Uh, now back to you, David. So we're talking about applying for college during COVID-19 and all the issues that parents and students face. Let's talk a little bit about, well, there's two things I want to uh, ask you about. One, um, preparing for the SATs, ACTs, and AP tests, and how those have changed during this time. And also, what do students do um, about sports and extracurricular activities if they're canceled? I mean, colleges are looking at the entire student. And with these activities canceled, how does that puts people in a disadvantage? So can you address some of that? Sure. And let's take the first one you asked about because there's so much changing right now in standardized testing. And, and I will tell you, true confession, I'm speaking as somebody who still wakes up at three in the morning with nightmares about that the SAT is about to start and I'm, and I'm, I'm in bed and, it's, uh, and I'm missing it. So years later, I, I have my SAT nightmares. And I'll also tell you that while I'm a big opponent, a big, sorry, a big proponent of holistic admissions, looking at the whole student, I actually think these tests do have a, a role uh, in engaging some, in some ways of gauging what students are learning and, and doing. Um, and I think they're overrated, but I think they have, they have a purpose. But I will tell you, I have never seen a revolution in the whole testing game the way I'm seeing now. The SAT and the ACT, the, the, the places that administer them are struggling to find a way to give those tests to students who are at home or to have kids come into a school a site and distance themselves for the time it takes to take that test. They've canceled one, uh, one administration after another of testing. And now there are a lot of students who are pinning their hopes on September there's no guarantee, I'm speaking to you in July, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Um, there's not a way to proctor these exams with students spread all over the world to keep them honest and keep them good if they're in their houses. They've already had enough scandals when, when students go to sites. So I actually, you know, a few years ago, I would have cheered this because it's led to a lot of schools going test optional, which means you don't have to submit your test results, a lot of colleges. And in fact, the University of California, which is a huge driver of higher ed trends has said that they're phasing out the ACT and SAT tests, at least for the students who are California residents. That's a huge deal. And it's leading all kinds of schools to rethink things. The Ivy League colleges are, are suspending the, the, the need for SAT, ACT. I actually think they serve a purpose. If you're a student who is in a school, that's, high school, it's not very good, but you ace a test like that, then they might not know your high school or the grades at your high school might not mean a lot, but that can actually help you. And I actually, I actually believe in rigor in higher ed in whatever form of higher ed is, whether it's community college, whether it's certificates, whether it's standard four year colleges. And I actually think that, that learning to do these tests is important, even though in real life, we, we are not gauged by tests all the time, but that's a more political thing. I, I wanna be practical today. I, I think those tests are much less important than they were, and it's going to mean that essays and other parts of your of a student's application are going to take on more importance, perhaps. Now, you asked me about about extracurriculars and sports. That this is really a tragedy, and this is really terrible because 
find those students who go through high school and they're not challenged too much in their classes, but they excel at volunteering and they excel at starting a club or doing something real, not, not to put on a resume, but to do it. They, they show their curiosity by, by, um, by going to community college and things that, on the weekends. Um, and now, or they have internships or they have research, or those, those are out the window in many, many, many cases. You just can't do that as a 16 or 17 year old. You can't do sports online. You can't do an internship online because most places aren't set up for that. Theoretically, you could do an internship online. It just doesn't work. And students who do volunteering because they want to give back, not because they want to impress admissions officer, are, are, are jeopardized. They're, they're just, it's, everything's suspended. This is, this, is really impact, this is really having huge impact on, the, on high school years. So my only thought is that it's just going to take a little while for us to rejigger and get back to normal. Absolutely. So let me ask you an important question. And I, I'm sure that a lot of parents are thinking about this. Should parents and students consider a gap year with all of that's happening right now? You know, we have online learning. Um, it's not really the same. There's no sorority fraternities going on at this point. What do you thank, think? Thank you. And it's funny because for years I've been out on the road advocating gap years. And I swear that when I first started saying this a decade plus ago, parents kind of thought I meant the students should go sell blue jeans at the gap. And <laughs> now they actually understand that a gap year is vital and important and common in a lot of other countries. It's more important than ever. I think students are not getting the full experience, high school experience right now. They didn't get it since, since last March, but I'll also say it's much more difficult. I used to say that a gap year should be comprised, should be, should be made of several things. Volunteering and giving back, your, your, your neighborhood tax dollars made your school possible if you went to public school, if otherwise they made your roads possible and things like that. Um, it should be an, an intellectually challenging experience, um, which could mean, as I said, taking a course at a local uh, college, community college. And it should mean working, being out and doing a job, even if it's a clerk in the supermarket or busing tables, it teaches you responsibility, getting up at eight, getting to work on time, or say getting to work on time at eight. But now I'll say as much as I believe a gap is more important, it's actually harder to put together a, a, a real uh, smart gap year. But there are colleges that are helping looking at this or high schools are thinking about this. I think we're gonna have some ideas. Um, and there, I do know students who are just, um, you know, they're baking goods for, for necessary, for, for wor essential workers. They're getting online as a volunteer and they're tutoring kids who are stuck at home. There's so many parents now, single parents, parents who've lost their jobs, who just need help. Even if it's, if it's a high school kid quote unquote babysitting or tutoring or doing music lessons as a volunteer on Zoom. I've met some really amazing high school students who are doing innovative things to help and they'll continue to do that for a gap year. Colleges look very favorably in gap years because an 18 year old student, let's face it, going to college is just a lot less mature than a 19 or 20 year old student. It's just the way the brains develop. And so it's a great thing to do a gap year. And I don't think we need to, we have this idea in this country, you have to rush from pre-K to kindergarten to elementary school, to high school, to college, to grad school. We need to slow down and think about priorities and let kids be curious and be learning and give back and challenge themselves or do a menial job. Now, the problem is, you know, that job busting tables is not going to happen right now. There are adults who need those jobs. It's a really difficult situation. Absolutely. This is such a crazy year. And I feel like this is a topic we can talk about for an hour. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, we don't have that time. So I would like uh, you to tell my listeners how to get in touch with you and learn more about MarcusCoach.com. Wait, I can talk quicker, though. <laughs> um, well, the best thing to do that is to to write me at, to look at marcuscoach.com. I'll spell that. It's like Neiman Marcus, but unfortunately not related. 
M-A-R-C-U-S, coach, as in I'm a college coach, dot com. And my name is David L. Marcus. And I do a lot of volunteering with, with parents, with families doing through hard times across the New York area and beyond. I also take on a few clients once in a while um, when my own kids don't need me. Um, unfortunately, they might all be homeschooled for the next year, so that's in, in jeopardy. But I love helping students figure out where to go and how to go and why to go and, and, and do their essays. And I love, love talking about options like the gap year that this year are more viable and more, more important than ever, I would say. It's a really difficult time, but I will tell you that the students who are looking at this creatively and figuring out ways to go on Khan Academy for free courses or do online courses or volunteer or read books because they have to, they want to read books, not because they want to read books. Those students are thriving. It's very difficult for kids in sports, especially contact sports. I won't lie about that, but we're all trying to think of, of solutions. And I'm, I'm here to talk to parents and, and, and their kids together whenever they want. So I, I really appreciate this, Hillary. And MarcusCoach.com is the best way. I'm also at bookmarcus at gmail.com. So the word book and the word Marcus, again, that's M-A-R-C-U-S at gmail.com. And I'm available pretty much 24-7. Well, I'm available in the evenings and weekends. <laughs> so that's Marcus, M-A-R-C-U-S, coach.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, David, for being on the show. This was incredibly informative, and I really appreciate your time. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, the Profit Express, Pomp International Galleries, the Donna Drake Show, and Fortune of Fine Jewelry. And last but not least, I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in each week. If you want more information on this show or any other show, you could check us out at Hillary Topper onair.com. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, you name it, we're out there. And um, we will see you next time. Thank you again. Thank you.